Hey everybody, David here, and today I want to take a look at, at some of the other interpretations of some of the characters from the Suicide Squad. These characters have appeared in many uh, previous shows and movies in the past, mostly shows, uh, so it's kind of cool to look back at some of these characters and the other actors that have portrayed them. There's a history there, just like Batman and Superman who have had many actors portray those characters. Some of these characters have also been betrayed by other uh, actors, uh, maybe not as well known as actors like Michael Keaton or Christopher Reeve or Ben Affleck or Henry Cavill, but they they have been portrayed by other actors. So let's take a look, and I'm going to give my brief thoughts on, on some of the past iterations uh, right now. So let's uh, start with some of the newer characters that are going to be appearing in this new Suicide Squad film, starting with The Thinker. The Thinker is going to be portrayed by Peter Capaldi in, in uh, this new Suicide Squad movie. Uh, in the past, though, we have seen uh, the Thinker in a, another DC uh, superhero uh, series, The Flash. That's right, played by Neil Sandelides. Uh, I hope I pronounced that name right. But yes, The Thinker appeared in season four of the, the series and uh, the worst season of The Flash, I have to say, um, to this date. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Thinker has not, was not portrayed very well. Um, I thought the actor was good. I just felt the season, uh, it was a headache. And uh, I'm pretty sure the thinker is going to be nothing like what he was in the Flash TV series. Uh, so it, I'm looking forward to a new, new interpretation of that character. And from what I saw, the alias, the name of the character his identity name, if you will, uh, is different from the Flash series than it is going to be in this new Suicide Squad movie. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this new interpretation is. Uh, next up, we have uh, King Shark, voiced by Sylvester Stallone in this new Suicide Squad movie. I think that's a great choice. Uh, before, though, he was also in the Flash TV series, the character of King Shark, but voiced by David Hayter. David Hayter had voiced the character a couple of times, actually, throughout uh, the Flash TV series, and uh, ever since the Flash season two. I remember when that first episode that had him come right at the very end it was like a surprise cameo all the fans started freaking out and were like what uh we couldn't believe that something like that happened and he has appeared in a couple of episodes uh since i don't think this season had him though i, th I feel like this season is the first time we haven't had King Shark, so or Gorilla Grodd for that ma matter, right? Uh, so, but it it's always a welcome thing whenever either Grodd or King Shark uh, come onto the show. Uh, all, even though we know the budget maybe can't really sustain them, it's great to see a really good CGI. Uh, King Shark in the Suicide Squad though so I'm really looking forward to seeing him in action in a big budget film uh, next up we have Captain Boomerang Captain Boomerang of course played by Jai Courtney uh, in this Suicide Squad movie and the previous one he is one of the returning characters uh, and I thought he did a great job in the previous Suicide Squad movie the character also appeared on Arrow, played by uh, Nick E. Terabe. Uh, Nick E. Terabe, uh was part of, actually, because he's a Flash villain in the, the, the crossover, it was weird having him appear on Arrow, but the cool thing about the episode of Arrow that he appeared in was that it was the Flash and Arrow crossover. It was the second crossover from that same week out, right after the first crossover that hit, they had the following night. So titled uh, Brave and the Bold. And obviously Captain Boomerang would later come back, I think in season five of the series, Nick uh, Terabe would return as in that role one more time. So he wasn't used a lot. Uh, I think he was one of those characters where that... If a movie or an, another medium was using him, then they couldn't use him. So they killed him off from what I remember in season five. Um, 
But uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, I, I thought they portrayed him in a more serious fashion, which was really cool. And they made him feel a little bit more deadly. Uh, I thought he really worked, especially in that crossover. It was fun to see. Uh, but I, I really love the Jai Car Courtney version uh, also. And I'm looking forward to seeing him back in this new movie. Uh, next up, we have uh, Rick Flagg. Rick Flagg is played by Joel Kinnaman uh, in this Suicide Squad movie, as well as the previous one. I thought he did a really good job in the previous movie, and it's great to see that James Gunn thinks he's a great fit to be bringing back. Uh, but there is another live-action version of, of Rick Flagg, and guess which show had him? If you don't remember, it is Smallville. That's right, Smallville played by Ted Whitehall. Uh, Whithall, sorry. Uh, Ted Whithall, it's interesting to point him out as Rick Flagg because um, he, I, I believe he appeared in three episodes. But what's interesting about him is that the actor who played Rick Flagg on Smallville, Ted Whithall, uh, also was in that Suicide Squad movie with Joel Kinnaman. So that's an interesting piece of trivia. He was one of the government... Uh, officials i guess that amanda waller was talking to in the restaurant with david harbour uh he, he him and david harbour were the two uh u.s agent people government things <laughs> in, in that uh first uh suicide squad movie so yeah there you go the rick flag from smallville was also in that suicide squad movie just him and joel kinnaman they might have been in the same room together at one point earlier on when uh, they were introducing the Enchantress to the government and what her powers were able to do. So maybe maybe they did share a scene together, but they didn't really interact too much together. But still, two, two uh, Rick Flags in, in one movie, so that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on, I have Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Of course, she was terrific as Amanda Waller. I think she is the best Amanda Waller so far. But guess what? We've actually had three other Amanda Wallers in the past so far. Her and another character have been portrayed the most out of all these uh, Suicide Squad uh, characters. And uh, I do think Viola Davis is the is the best one. But the first person to ever play... Uh, Amanda Waller in live action was actually Pam Greer in Smallville, who I also think did a really good job. Uh, in Smallville, she like appeared in like four or five episodes, if I remember correctly. Uh, but she she did a really good job too. I remember being really excited about the character appearing on Smallville because she had also appeared in Justice League Unlimited, and I thought the character was so good in Justice League Unlimited, voiced by C.H. Pounder. Uh, Pam Greer, I thought, played a really good live-action interpretation uh, being brought to, to life for the first time. After that, Angela Bassett would play uh, Amanda Waller in the Green Lantern movie starring Ryan Reynolds. Now, I do feel that Angela Bassett was underused uh, the character felt like it was just there uh, to please the fans. It didn't really feel too much like Amanda Waller to me. She was a doctor working for some uh, government that uh, was researching on aliens. And then she gets knocked out later and we never see her again afterwards. And it really did seem like a waste of a role. Uh, and Angela Bassett is now in the MCU. Interesting. Uh, as T'Challa's uh, mother. So there you go. Uh, so she went on to do great things. Uh, then, finally, one of the most... Before Viola Davis got the role of Amanda Waller in the Suicide Squad film, uh, Cynthia Addy Robinson played the role of Amanda Waller on Arrow. That's right. Uh, Amanda Waller appeared on Arrow a couple of times. I believe she was introduced in season two, although she might have had... A he maybe season two was the heaviest... Uh, role for her her time on the show I don't remember now season two or three I know she appeared in season three eventually I think they did kill her off but I think that was in season four where they killed her off either way I thought she did a good job she had that tough edge to her I she wasn't the idea of what I thought Amanda Waller was or how I thought she was supposed to look uh, the CW likes to cast very pretty people in um 
not that the other women who played uh, Amanda Waller weren't pretty, but they like to, to they like to get a specific type of person. Uh, if you look at the CW uh, shows, they like to get like young, hot people. Uh, who are nice and fit and stuff because the CW tries to aim more for young viewers, teenagers, to be, uh, uh, as a matter of fact. It's it's more of a young adult channel, which kind of annoys me at times because us adults would like to see these shows too. But whatever. I think acting-wise and character-wise, I think she did do a great job on Arrow. And uh, so... Just look wise, it's it wasn't the idea of what I thought Amanda Waller would look like, right? She's usually described as a big woman, and uh, the other she doesn't have to be super big, but like I think the other women that I just mentioned uh, were more suited. Although Angela Bassett wasn't that big either, but she she did look tougher. I I, I thought. Um, Moving on to the next character, I have Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn has also been betrayed many times in live action, just like Amanda Waller has, starting with uh, the Birds of Prey TV series, where she was portrayed by Mia uh, Sarah. Mia, Mia Sarah played uh, the role in that show, um, <laughs> although I, I will say it's probably my least favorite version of, uh, of the character in live action because uh, she didn't really act kooky, you know? She added straightforward. She did have a romantic interest in the Joker, though the Joker only appears briefly in the first episode of Birds of Prey. She would not appear, he would not appear later on, but the character of Harleen Quinzel uh, did have a crush on the Joker and did, it, it just, I think it would have been interesting to see that character with the Joker, which we never got to see. Um, after that, we would get the character again in a brief cameo on Arrow, uh, where it was, I think, in the third, or it might have been in the second season, where Cassidy Alexa uh, portrayed the character, although you never got to see her face. She was voiced, however, by Tara Strong, uh, who did the voice of Harley Quinn in uh, the Arkham Asylum video games, as well as a couple of other animated projects uh, for the character of Harley Quinn. She was never called Harley Quinn in in the episode uh, when we got to see her cameo, but uh, there there was something that that hinted at that it was her. Not only Tara Strong voicing her, but the the the, the ponytails uh, were very much like Harley Quinn. So. Uh, there you go on that. And finally, we also got Francesca Root Dodson, who played the role of Echo on Gotham. Now, even though she wasn't named Harley Quinn, she was named Echo. Uh, the character was clearly in a homage to Harley Quinn. It was really supposed to be Harley Quinn. There was just that dumb rule where they were not allowed to use uh, the name Harley Quinn. Uh, so they had to call her something else. But she clearly was with the Joker, uh, played by, uh, I forgot what the kid's name is, but he did a really good job <laughs> as, uh, as as uh, Mr. J. Um, but uh, And it was nice seeing the two of those characters I remember interacting. And she was definitely a creepy version, very true to what Harley Quinn was. Um, and yeah, I thought I thought that interpretation was pretty good. Uh, but obviously, the best interpretation of the character is the one that we currently have in the movies ever since 2016's Suicide Squad movie. And then she got to be the focus point of the Birds of Prey movie. And then, of course, she's coming back in The Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn. Uh, Margot Robbie. That's right. Margot Robbie is easily, hands down, the best interpretation of of the character of Harley Quinn. Ever since that character was created by Paul Dini back in Batman the Animated Series, she was an animated character first. Remember, she wasn't one of the characters, like all these characters are usually from the comics first, then brought into to the animated world and then to the movie world. This character started off in the animated world first and now is being done in live action. And hopefully Paul Dini is getting all the rewards from it uh, because he created such a terrific character who Margot Robbie is crushing out of the park. So there you go, guys. Those are the characters in some of their previous 
iterations of of other actors that have portrayed their roles in live action and you know i give actors who portray these roles in live action a little bit more props because it's not easier uh to bring these characters to life especially in the medium of television i think it's even harder movies maybe it's easier to find someone not all the time but sometimes uh, and when you do find that right person i think uh you really give them um, the proper respect that they deserve. And all these actors here, a lot of them have done a really uh, terrific job. So with that being said, tell me guys, what is, and girls, <laughs> what is your favorite interpretations of these characters? Were there any here that I mentioned? And uh, are there any other characters in the new Suicide Squad movie that I missed that have had multiple iterations of that character? Uh, as far as I know, when I went through the list of the characters appearing in the new Suicide Squad movie, uh, these are the ones that... I, I, I remembered had appeared in other versions of other shows and, and films. So with that being said, comment below, tell me your favorite versions. Also, I want to plug in my Patreon supporters. These are the people that support this channel and help me uh, want to see me get better and uh, what I do. They believe in what I'm doing and they signed up to a monthly subscription fee where they are going to receive a credit at the end of each video where I thank them publicly because yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome to know that there are people that believe in what you are doing and want to see you succeed. And I really appreciate that. And I know not everybody can, but if you can, you know, it's right right now it's just a $5 and a $10 tier. And $10 is really, if you can help me a little bit more, it would be very much appreciated. One day when I feel like or find something that I can update the $10 tier with, add something a little bit more, believe me, I will. Uh, but right now, the $5 one is good enough to, for me, believe me, every little bit helps. And uh, yeah, these people are awesome and I have to thank them once again. Thank you very much. Uh, for supporting me um, and hopefully we can get more hopefully so and if not if this is what I get then this is what I get what can I do um, with that being said thank you very much one more time to my patreon supporters you people are awesome and um, yeah I guess that's it so I'm wrapping it up here I hope you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel because that also helps the channel as well as well as sharing a link to this video and letting other people know about it that also helps and uh, until next time everybody I'm ending this here until next time take care <laughs>